Harvest time tracking tutorial. How to use Harvest for beginners. Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'll be showing you guys how you can get started with Harvest. So let's get into it. Now, Harvest is a platform that not only allows you to track time, but they also provide you with powerful integrations into your pre-existing project management tools like Slack, Stripe, Asana, and more. Plus, they allow you for invoicing and payments. So two of the most essential elements of a POS system have been integrated into Harvest, and you can easily manage your payrolls and invoicing while keeping track of who is putting how many hours in and more. Now to get started, simply click on Try Harvest for free on getharvest.com and you can sign up with Google or you can get started with your email address and there is no credit card required for you to get started. Now, once you do that, just click on continue over here and enter your company name and then just click on create my account. After that, you're going to enter how many people work at your business and you can enter your members or your employees over here. After that, you want to enter the goals that you are using Harvest for. So for example, if we are using it to make our business back on, you know, making sure that our business is on track, tracking billable time and invoicing clients, um, better estimates for future projects, and yeah, that's around it. So I'll click on next over here, and then I can get started with our first project. So let's say our first project is Carve Co. And the project is um, digital marketing. So let's say we did digital marketing for them and what's our role. So I am the owner and the industry. So let's say we are in marketing, web design, web development, accounting, yeah, advertising, marketing, PR. And we're just going to answer this question. After that, we are going to click on done. Take me to my account. And just like that, this will be our basic dashboard. Now, in this dashboard, you will see on the top, you have a panel. This is your basic navigation. And then within that, you have your sub panels. Now, first off, you have a timesheet that can help you track time as well as approved pending approval and unsubmitted time. So someone can submit their timesheet that, you know, they've spent a certain number of hours doing a task and you can approve it as the owner. Then you have your expenses. So what kind of expenses you are going to be incurring as a business. This might be your light cost. This might be your fuel mileage. This might be your bills for your building if you are in a building so on and so forth then you're going to have your project so in this project you can actually set budgets see how much they have spent and then the remaining budget of your client you also will see the costs for that particular client then you have your team section where you can add your team members and take a look at the number of hours each member is spending that includes billable and non-billable hours then you have invoices that you can generate and estimates. So let's get started with building our expenses first because that is a segregated category as compared to the rest. So let's say for our digital marketing, we have a category of, let's say, other. Or let's say this is going to be our category of other. And we can add notes. So this might be Facebook ads like this. And this expense is billable and I'm going to enter the amount. So let's say we are spending $500 on Facebook ad and I can add this expense for Crave Co. Then I can add another expense. Let's say this is going to be on the first. Now let's say this expense is from the first, which might be Instagram ads like this. And this is maybe $150. And we're going to save this expense. Now, in this way, you can track expenses. You can build broad categories as well as more detailed categories. And you can click on submit for approval on the bottom right to be able to submit these for approval. Now, you can also make sure to add everything together and put in everything all together for approval instead of individually sending out each report. Now, next up, we're going to go into our time. From here, we can start tracking time and adding our billable and non-billable hours. Now, let's say I pull in a calendar 
and you can connect to Google or Outlook to make this a bit easier. Usually I do like to connect to Google to make sure that all of my hours are connected accurately. So what we're going to do over here, there are no events, but what I'm going to do is let's say we spent time on marketing and then we can enter notes as well on what type of, you know, work we were doing. And we can just go on ahead and turn on our billable time tracker. So from here, it's going to start tracking time and then I can stop. Now, if you are on the go, you can also select that option and you can download their applications for the Harvest app on your mobile device or on your other computer or desktop as well to make sure that you are able to track your time accordingly. Keep in mind that you can't manually put in, you know, hours. Instead, you would have to wait for approval and you can submit your timesheets like so to be able to make sure that all of these are submitted for approval and are accurate now after that if you go into projects you can provide more detail about each individual project so if i go into digital marketing over here this will show us the project progress and the hours per week spent on this project. So this is the total budget of this project. Obviously, you're going to set that up. So we're going to click on edit project to actually set this up. Now, let's say this project started on the 1st of January and this is going to end on the 5th of March. Then you have permissions. So show this project report to everyone or only show it to administrators and people who manage. Then we have the project type. So if it is a times and material project where it will have billable rates and a total budget, then you have a fixed free project and then you have a non-built client. So for us, this is a time and materials one where we have a project billable rate and we also might have a task billable rate, a person billable rate. So this is very variable. If People that are working in editing your ads are paid differently than the people working in uh, posting and the people that are managers. That might reflect a person billable rate. However, usually for clients, you give them a project billable rate and then you do your own payroll. This is the standard I like to go by. I don't like to go by the person billable rate. However, it might not be very easy to set that up. So to set up a segregated payroll. So if you want, you can put in your person billable rates. Then you have your budget. So total project fees or fees per task or total project hours. Let's say we have the total project fees and the budget for this particular project might be, let's say it's $8,000 and the budget resets every month and includes billable and non-billable project expenses. And then send email alerts if the project exceeds 80% of the budget. So sometimes if you're working on a project, you might end up working more hard even though the budget is limited. So that is why you do require to have alerts set in. Then you can enter the types of tasks that might be happening within this particular tasks, within this particular project. So for us, it's not related to programming. And it's related to project management, marketing, and any other type of tasks such as social media calendars or uploads, ad content generation, ad generation, potential leads, all of that can be added as tasks. And then click on update project and click on save project anyways. And just like that, you can now further improve your services for that particular project or business. So I hope you guys found this video helpful and you are now able to get started with harvest time tracking. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe.